today's guest brings me great joy as also a deeper meaning to life breaking the shackles of societal norms he's the only known person of royal lineage in modern india to have publicly revealed that he's a homosexual we all live for ourselves here is a man who has dedicated his life to the cause of ensuring the lgbt community lives a life of happiness acceptance and meaning just as every human deserves my one conversation with him filled my heart with warmth leaving a lasting impact a true humanitarian no wonder he has been interviewed internationally several times honored many times and interviewed thrice by Oprah Winfrey. Privileged to introduce Prince Manvendra Singh Gohil on Life Begins at 40. 40 and a big, big hug for being so kind and so compassionate. So, um, yeah, thanks, thanks for having me here. <laughs> part of a 650 year old dynasty and then to come out about your sexuality. Hmm. How easy or difficult was that? See, when you are born in a, 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 a reputed family and uh, especially uh, such an old uh, dynasty, one, ours is one of the oldest dynasties of, uh, of India, uh, and to be the 39th direct descendant of this uh, dynasty, which was established in the 13th century, hmm. uh, we come with a lot of uh, responsibilities on our shoulders. Because uh, even though it is a democratic republic and we don't have our uh, rights and privileges uh, as we enjoyed in the past, but still we are the custodian of this rich cultural heritage which we have inherited from our ancestors. So people look upon you as uh, role models and icons and uh, you know source of inspiration for a lot of things. And uh, and they respect us like you know like gods. You know that uh, our ancestors are worshipped even today. Their statues are worshipped like uh, you know you worship a, a deity or you worship a god. So uh, uh, for uh, from that kind of a background, if uh, you know you can imagine if uh, I took this step of coming out uh, of my so-called royal closet <laughs> and telling the world uh, who I am was uh, a big uh, uh, challenge. Uh, and uh, of course, came with a lot of struggles and a lot of uh, brickbats and everything because uh, I put my entire reputation at stake, you know, uh, uh, like, yeah, so like the entire, rep my reputation, and therefore, uh, I, I happen to be the first member of a royal family in the world to come out. I mean, uh, I, I uh, still happen to be the only one in India. I mean, there have been people around the world who have come out, but in India, I happen to be the only one. And that uh, answers the question because uh, nobody else in India has has had the courage to come out and speak uh, from a royal family. So you can imagine uh, everyone's scared of their uh, uh, reputation and their fame because the uh, uh, moment you come out, you're definitely uh, you're going to be targeted. So I was also targeted, but uh, uh, like, you know, I, I still continued to fight for my rights, for the, for the rights of the ones who have been uh, given injustice in our country. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't uh, regret doing it. Uh, and those who, those who fight uh, with honesty will definitely have to cross a lot of hurdles and obstacles because honesty is not uh, accepted that well in any society, in any culture. And, uh, we all we, we are so much used to listening to fake things that we are not used to listening to truth. Right. So it will always be uh, truth. This always is said truth is is considered bitter. So I said I don't care. You will have to swallow the bitter pill whether you like it or don't like it. But I'm not going to leave my truth and my honesty. So I I, I managed to uh, you know overcome all the hurdles and obstacles and and I knew that truth will always win. It is said in in, in Satya, Satya Meva Jayate. You you can be uh, uh, you can be a hypocrite, but you can never win. Uh, you know over uh, your hypocrisy, you have to accept the truth one day or the other. Yeah, 
we one day we stop living our personalities and become ourselves as we are yes yes ji so uh, manindra aap bahut hi multifaceted personality hain you practice yoga you uh, you are, you also sing beautifully you are a classical musician um, trained classical musician and you sport an insane sense of humor i was looking at some of your TED, tedx talks and i loved your famous line i'm not good with emails and i'm not good with females <laughs> and i can't tell you <laughs> i <Yeah>. loved it <laughs> and there's so much more to you so how have you been able to overcome this stigma and dedicate your life to various causes and other people yeah see uh, when you are honest to yourself and you are honest to others i think uh, that itself paves a lot of uh, ways for yourself uh, you know because uh, as i said that some one day or the other somebody has to accept that truth you know whether they you like it or don't like it so uh, i didn't i didn't do anything automatically the uh, the hurdles started clearing in my life and i started uh, you know uh, overcoming them and uh, uh, the the biggest of course the turning point in my life was my invitation by oprah winfrey uh, in the year uh, 2007 i came out in 2006 and in within a year i got an invitation in fact this phrase about uh, uh, i'm not good with emails and females came because oprah tried to contact me through an email in 2006 itself and i i i <laughs> i just you know uh, uh, you know uh, i didn't uh, kind of uh, consider that because uh, and that's when i told her i said look oprah i i i i didn't do it in purpose but because i'm not good with emails and females so i took it took you one year to invite me you know <laughs> so otherwise i would have been on our show even earlier than that but uh, that oprah show was a turning point because that changed the mindset of a lot of people uh, not just in india but across the globe because her, my appearance on her show uh, where she very cleverly brought about my personal story and uh, opened the eyes of a lot of people who had who had lot of misconceptions about being gay in india yes so that gave me more, many opportunities from country uh, where wherever her show she is very popular so she was wherever her shows were aired i started getting invitation so i call it the snowball effect so when one country invites and the other one thinks oh i should should also invite so then they started calling me and the third one and fourth one and and end of the year my entire passport was filled you know i had to renew my passport because the pages got over <laughs> my my passport had not expired but i had to there was no pages left you know i had visited almost the entire world you know wow. so uh, so uh, yeah so i realized that uh, uh, it's not just enough to do advocacy within the country but uh, international advocacy was something which i was looking for and oprah gave me that opportunity and uh, that's how i started talking at international forums and meeting so many personalities pres- prime ministers presidents uh, chief justices hollywood and the governors and uh, so many celebrities i met all over the world uh, and just giving them one message is that please try to understand our issues and please uh try to sensitize the indians uh, on our issues so that all we want is acceptance and support absolutely it's a human rights issue absolutely so um just a question while you was uh, speaking that came to my mind with biden coming in do you see yourself in any way getting into a more of an international role and uh, yeah i think uh, yeah see any change of leadership uh, happens anywhere in the world uh, we do expect some uh, change coming in and uh, i think uh, biden uh, uh, as i have observed uh, uh, is uh, uh, is more loved by americans and when i say americans i would say the the lgbt americans the, the americans who are the, from the lgbt community he is more loved uh, by them uh so and there is a, it's a good combination also we have an uh, first time we have an indian origin uh and a lady uh, uh, uh vice president Gee. you know uh, kamla harris so uh, i think that's also going to help 
in a way that this combination i'm i'm expecting a lot of uh, positive changes especially with regards to the trans rights because uh, uh, though india managed to get trans rights way back in 2014 yeah with the nalsa judgment given by supreme court america is still struggling with a lot of trans issues so i'm expecting some some major positive changes coming in the trans uh, rights and issues in america yeah. which will uh, uh, which will help uh, the community and which will also help the general lgbt population uh, you know uh, deserve uh, what they ought to be getting wonderful and i hope that happens sooner than later yes yeah hum <laughs> log yeah we have five years more uh, yeah but yeah i mean he's just appointed so there is yeah so i think not five i think they have a four, four years but yeah. still yeah it's four years is a long time absolutely yeah. just started the journey they have just started the journey so ek cheez yeah, yeah. that i'm very curious about is that what is the science behind us all having sexual preferences i know many people who have experimented in their teens but as they grow up uh, most of them uh, you know have a what would be perceived as uh, accepted social societal norms as being heterosexual so are gays or people lgbt community or trans wired differently see i think i don't think there's a, any difference between a, a heterosexual person and a homosexual person it's just it's just a sexual preference which is different right. otherwise you know it's it's not that every heterosexual man will be attracted to uh, any heterosexual woman mm-hmm. and not vice versa you know we all have our our uh, choices you know that uh, which what uh, what kind of a uh, as a, as a uh, as a as a any ma- straight man or a woman will have their their choices and preferences same way a gay man or a lesbian woman or a trans person has their own uh, preferences amongst the various uh, uh, you know uh, you know population which is there you know that uh, what what kind of a person they, they would prefer to uh, uh, you know date with or would, would like to partner with so we we have we have that emo- it's not it's not just physical i mean this this is another misconception which is there in the society that uh, uh, homosexuals are nothing but sexual organs uh, sexual uh, beings you know they would they would like you know they are only uh, they are only into physical sex and you know things like that i mean like you they, they say uh, you know uh, 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 a person who is into uh, you know just a the, just a sex where you what is that word called um, i'm not getting it that you know uh, where you are just uh, dating for a night and then you forget uh, forget about that person you know yeah. so the, we are not that kind yeah. of person exactly. when we love somebody yeah it's it's the same way as a heterosexual you know, person uh, likes to love or likes to date another guy right. or girl yeah so uh and what would you say what are your thoughts on india's acceptance of the lgbt community see uh i think uh, india is moving towards the acceptance like if you see the history uh, of over a, you can say a decade or two decades we have made significant progress uh, i mean uh, i would say post uh, 2000 and uh, there there are a number of factors like there is a lot lot of people have come out uh, of the closet i think one of the biggest things which happened was uh, uh, hiv you know i always say hiv is has been a curse to the society but it has been a blessing in disguise to the to the lgbt community especially to the gay uh, bisexual and the trans population not much for the lesbian because it was after hiv started spreading in india the government realized that they need to fund and support organizations or groups who are working for this cause because of the fact that uh, they they wanted to the in fact like for example my organization lakshya trust started with a government uh, support and funding and way back in 220 years back even when we had a law which was criminalizing us and yet the government was funding and supporting us knowing fully well that we are lgbt organization so that that led to empowerment of uh, the community and then that also gave us the courage to uh, uh, come out and speak because we had a, the, uh, any you know when you get a government support it's a big thing 
you know uh, uh, that uh, uh, today government of a country and many people uh, when have come to india they are quite surprised that they are they are unable to understand that how can uh, government uh, fund you and support you knowing fully well that you all are doing criminal uh, act uh, and on the other hand you have the same government which is criminalizing you you know punishing you so yeah. they were it is a, but i said well india is a country of paradox that you have to accept this fact that the, the, this ha- this happens uh, in india mm-hmm. so uh, but the, definitely uh, people uh, came out of the closet and spoke about themselves so that has uh, has helped uh, in mainstreaming our issues a lot wonderful so ek cheez which brings me to the next question ki how do we recognize our sexuality uh, for a person like me it was easy but i know a lot of young people these days who are struggling have had nervous breakdowns are confused so help me understand help them understand see uh, 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 like if you take my example uh, i was not totally unaware about uh, what is gay what is homosexual as i was growing up i all i knew was that uh, i had an attraction towards the same sex but then in india it is so confusing because we live in a society or a culture which is so homosocial you know where you see boys and boys clinging together and girls and girls clinging together but uh, when you want to play with a girl when you are young you are always told no you cannot play with a girl you know yeah. because she is opposite sex but if you are if you are a boy you will be allowed to play with a boy and if you are a girl you will be allowed to play with a girl so uh, uh, Th- that confusion is there in so many people's mind you know that uh, when you are attracted is it is it normal is it is, is it uh, you know abnormal is it natural what what it is so uh, but uh, uh, each one of us i think needs to uh, have somebody to hear us or understand us and uh, i think uh, for that matter counseling helps a lot you need a very good counselor mm-hmm. and a person who is from the community can be the best counselor Uh, i was also uh, when i was undergoing this confusion i was my, uh, i was a client of none other than ashok rao kavi who ha- who happens to be india's first gay activist he was my counselor and he uh, uh, brought me to terms to the reality and he, he kind of you know made me understand my sexuality my my sexual identity and give me a name to it and give me and you know re- make me realize that i need to accept it so i think we all uh, and for that reason i uh, now uh, that we have gone made so much of progress in this country i am trying to uh, uh, educate schools that uh, uh, at at uh, school level itself uh, each school should have uh, a counselor a school counselor uh, who tries to uh, listen to the student the child's uh, Uh, you know because it's that uh, post puberty stage at the as adolescent stage where this confusion comes mm. and it, it and it, it is the duty of the counselor to help that student come out of the state of confusion and to help them identify their sexuality so uh, are regular psychologists and counselors also e- equipped to counsel on this uh see now th- there is th- there has been slight change like people are more aware but still what we try to do is we link uh, uh, or we educate the counselors when i say we uh, i my mean organizations like ours lakshya trust hamsafar trust which is in mumbai they are helping uh, psychi- psychiatrists psychologists uh, counselors and sensitizing them on on our issues so like for example when i came out uh, first time to my parents i came out through a psychiatrist now fortunately for me the psychiatrist who was treating me uh, happened to be extremely sensitized towards these issues mm. uh, and i'm i'm sure uh, like organizations like hamsafar had you know uh, uh, had which has been started now since 1995 they have been able to sensitize a lot of doctors and medical practitioners so they mm. they have they were already aware so it was not easy or it was rather was easy for them to understand my issues so i think uh, uh, definitely training is needed but because our education system is not that much well equipped uh, with uh, our issues we we need to uh, still train these uh, medical uh, especially the mental health professionals uh, uh, on our issues and now now we know that that indian psychiatric association 
has also supported us when Article 377 was being heard in the Supreme Court. And it, uh, like American Psychiatric Association way back in 1970s itself had uh, said that homosexuality is not a mental illness. The Indian Psychiatric Association also uh, holds the same uh, thing. And uh, uh, I'm sure they will, they will be able to, you know, uh, uh, sensitize the, their uh, professionals uh, towards a better understanding. I'm glad that we are moving towards a more inclusive world now. So, uh, what yes. is, G, so what are you as, um, as a prince and as someone who has a trust dedicated to this, uh, doing to make it, make the world a safer place for the community? And what are the five basic things that Lakshya Trust is focusing on? Okay. So, uh, uh, see, my, my dream is to create a, a LGBT community campus, I call it, which I, the work has already started on one of my royal establishments uh, in, in Gujarat, where I'm trying to create a safe space, as a, 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 I would say a paradise, <laughs> as it is called by some people from the community, where, the, 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 where I could kind of, you know, house uh, or give shelter to those uh, who in the eventuality of coming out to their families or friends would be thrown out from homes and they would have no place to go. So uh, that kind of a shelter home or rescue home I, I'm trying to create where uh, with the aim of giving the social empowerment and financial empowerment. Mm -hmm. So uh, my my campus would be like a transit uh, home where, uh, where the community who feels uh, that they are like, you know, who would be home, would be rendered homeless could come there and stay there uh, and uh, uh, have the freedom to be who they are and the freedom to be or to do what they want to do without having to bother about what the outside world thinks about them. Hmm. And uh, I would teach them, give, give them skills. I would uh, build their capacities and whatever they like to do because most of us are very creative. We are, we are born, born talented and born creative. So uh, if they are fond of embroidery, stitching, cooking, pottery, photography, fashion, whatever they are inclined towards. We would like to train them. We would like to commercially exploit their skills and see that how we could employ them or you know they are self-employed and thereby, thereby they would be able to earn a living uh, and you know have live with dignity and respect. So that's the, the aim uh, I'm looking at. Lakshya Trust uh, uh, is, is managing this uh, campus and I would say uh, one of the things which we are aiming at is uh, equality, uh, discrimination, hmm. non-discrimination. Uh, uh, yeah, the, then uh, we would like to work for uh, empowerment, which is which is very important. Uh, when I, and that 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 talks about employ the employment, health issues because health uh, you we, we need to be healthy physically, uh, psych mentally, psychologically, and and uh, socially. Uh, so that that is uh, that's that's one of the key uh, areas uh, and uh, education because uh, uh, we need to uh, educate them, make them literate, uh, teach them skills. Uh, so these are the some of the key things which Lakshya is aiming at. Lovely. God speak to you. Um, so um, what what? Thank you. <laughs> What would be your advice for those uh, who are confused with their sexuality? See, I think the first and foremost thing one needs to understand is that uh, uh, self acceptance is the is the first thing which uh, some one of one the individual should be able to overcome. If you are able to accept yourself and uh, give yourself an identity, what do you think you are? You can you can you can call yourself straight or heterosexual or you may be bisexual or you are gay or you're lesbian or trans or queer whatever is your sexual identity closest to you and not necessary in the initial stages you would be able to identify your sexual identity like I, I do a lot of counseling and when sometimes people come to me and say that oh oh I'm not uh, I'm not gay and I'm not bi I'm, I think I'm straight but I have I I kind of I I do like uh, uh, guys, you know, a, a, a boy will come and say something to me. And then over a period of time, I'm counseling and then uh, one day he will come and tell me, 
uh, I think I made a mistake. I'm not straight, but I am bi, bisexual. Uh, and then again, after some counseling, then, then they will come and tell me, no, 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 I don't think even I'm, I'm bi. I'm, I'm now, I think I'm gay. So, you know, it takes, it takes, uh, it, it does take a time for a person to, uh, to kind of accept one's uh, sexuality. I mean, uh, it, it has happened with a lot of my cases. And I just listen to them and just give them time to make them, uh, you know, come to the terms with the, their sexuality. So if that self-acceptance happens and uh, the, you are sure about your identity, then uh, I think the next step is whether the person would like to come out to their, their family or friends or near, one, near and dear ones. That is, of course, optional and that not many people are, are uh, ready to do that because they always fear stigma and uh, discrimination. So, uh, but of course, uh, I always uh, insist that uh, self-acceptance is the first step one should take. Hmm. Hmm. And what would you, uh, what do you, th in broad terms, is qualified as homophobic or transphobic behavior? And this is for people like all of us, you know, to understand yeah. that so we are more sensitized and careful and uh, in a in a thought process and behavior. Yeah, I think you are, you touched upon a very relevant question. Now, I want to share something very, very interesting uh, to you. Uh, that there has been a study done by, I think, um, Harvard University or some, I don't remember the name of the university. I saw that in a, in a, in a film. It was a very scientific study which has been done. And it has been universally, uh, and this is, a, again, a universal uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, evidence which has, been correct, uh, which has been collected, which says that most of the homophobic people are homosexuals themselves. Oh, man. You know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see. Yeah. So, uh, see, and I'm coming to it. So, the, this when the study was done, it was it actually uh, shocked a lot of us, including homosexual population. Now, there is a there is a reason behind this also, and I'm coming back to the same statement which I made in the past. Is the, the like why I told you that self acceptance is very important because most of us, uh, because of fear of uh, this stigma and discrimination and whatever you know taboos there are around homosexuality do not want to accept themselves okay. you know yeah and that uh, denial of self acceptance hmm. uh, makes them uh, you know uh, develop this kind of a phobia they they say that okay if, if i am not going to accept myself i will not allow others to accept uh, us also so that gives rise to this kind of a phobia. See, what is phobia? Uh, whether it is homophobia, transphobia, or any phobia, you know, you may, you may have phobia with water also, or you may have, phobia is developed out of certain fear, which is there in your back of your mind due to certain assumptions or certain, uh, you know, things which you have, you have experienced or, you know, heard or uh, that kind of a thing. So uh, according to me, uh, this phobia has to be dealt with, uh, with a lot of counseling, with a lot of mental health uh, professionals. Because uh, I always, uh, whenever I'm giving talks, I always uh, say that homosexuality is not a mental disorder. Absolutely. But homophobia definitely is. <laughs> you know? yes. So, yeah, so we, we, we need... We need to, yeah, so we need to handle uh, the, this phobia uh, or the people who are phobic very, very diplomatically and carefully because they, the, most of them, they don't know they, are, they, are, they suffer from this phobia, you know. They just do it uh, unintentionally, as I said, that, you know, they, they, they will just, uh, you know, try to create the scare and, uh, uh, and, and I used to think it is only in certain region, when, but I have traveled the whole world Thank thanks to Oprah. And uh, I found this homophobia in, uh, in all parts of the world. It's, it's in America, Europe, Australia, Asia, wherever I've traveled, I've seen this homophobia and this, hom and this homophobia has originated from the homosexual population. So the Harvard University or whichever university has conducted this study is absolutely right, you know, because the study was done in a very scientific manner. Uh, it was not just some random kind of a thing. It was done by a renowned university. So, uh, so uh, therefore, we need to, and I don't say that all homophobic people are homosexuals, but yes, most of them are, uh, are homosexual uh, population. 
so we we need to do as i was, and then i was giving this example just now about you know i get clients who are who just refuse to accept the fact that they are gay and then over a period of time they themselves come out to tell me and this and say that yes we lied to you hmm. but uh, yes we are gay and now we are accepting it so it, you have to give time to that person you know to to uh, understand and to be able to accept gosh so yes i think the biggest challenge most of us face is self acceptance beyond anything else yes yes exactly Jeez. self acceptance is, is the biggest hurdle yeah it took me i mean imagine it took me um i don't know how many uh, i mean i was 12 13 when i started kind of you know uh, uh, having this attraction and uh, it took me almost when i was uh, 35 years of age uh, uh, that i or not 35 32 or 33 years when I, when i was 32 or 33 i i accepted myself so imagine if i person like me from 13 to 33 it took me 20 years to accept myself so you know you can imagine what others how much time others will take you know absolutely that's a so, long journey yeah 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 very long journey 20 years is long journey two decades yes so much respect for you yeah. <laughs> so so i <laughs> like questions now Yeah, 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 yeah. Informative and enlightening section. Jeez. Yes. Uh, your hobby. Um, music, Indian classical music. And uh, what clothes are you most comfortable in? Indian uh, traditional kurtas, uh, churidars. Wonderful. The most joyous part time, a uh, past time for you and your husband. Mm. both of us i mean combined you, you say you must ask you ask you asking or is it individual both of you what you uh, watching netflix yeah. ah. watching netflix what, what's the latest uh, series or movie that you've watched together uh, we were watching this um, i am forgetting the name of the series it, it was about uh, the british royalty the crown Yeah, the crown. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Gee, gee. Okay. So, what keeps you so young and fit? ये तो मुझे भी जानना है. Well, uh, uh, I I live in the present. Uh, I I don't worry much about the past because past is not going to come back, and I don't worry much about the future. I like to live in the present, hmm. and uh, uh, I'm always happy and I'm always uh, gay <laughs> because we had this we had this point. we had this poem in school work while you work and play while you play that is the way to be happy and gay so <laughs> you know i am i am always see when you are happy then you will be able to give happiness to others because so i think yeah so that that's what just keeps me cheerful and young yeah that is a simple mantra to a young and fit and happy what is the most adventurous thing you have done most adventurous uh i tried to cook food but was i did not go beyond lighting the gas <laughs> so i i i do i i burnt a few pans and pots and i i kind of burst the kettle and uh, wow. i did not i i kind of belong to mr mr bean bean is my uh, you know uh, uh, somebody who gives me a lot of inspiration and I also uh, I am I am uh, called Mr Bean by a lot of people because I am expert in breaking things and uh, messing around with things which I am not supposed to do. So my husband doesn't allow me in the kitchen, but when he's not there, I I sneak inside and then I I always end up burning something or breaking something. You know? <laughs> What is your favorite food after all that has been burnt? <laughs> well, I try to make um, ice cream in the oven. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah uh, i'm i'm kind of um, you know a uh, sweet tooth guy so i like mm. to uh, make sweet things and uh, i did um, try to melt some uh, indian sweets and i put it uh, and then i added some milk and then i mixed it around and i put it in the oven to uh, melt it and then i removed it and i put it in the freezer so <laughs> so so yeah so 
uh, yeah, so I, I've been doing those kind of experiments. At this rate, you're going to qualify for uh, Master Chef Australia. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, um, what, <laughs> yeah, let let yeah. What is that one thing your husband does for you that makes you the most happy? I think he is he is very very caring, very practical person, uh, and very understanding. Yeah, and a very and a very patient person because I I travel so much I'm not give, able to give him much time and and uh, he is very very patient and he says uh, do your duty first you can always come back and tell me the stories of what you have done uh, I don't need to come with you and uh, I don't need to wait for you so uh, very very patient and understanding I mean uh, it's it's uh, very few people are lucky to you know have uh, spouses like him because. Uh, you know, the, the, I I have known spouses who are very very demanding also, mm. and uh, but he's he has he has been very understanding and very practical. So we yeah. watch out, huh? Kisi din pata lagega that I sneak up to him and steal him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he he's he is he is so much. He he is a big fan of so many of my straight uh, uh, you know friends, especially the women. You know. And so many when our my I have so many straight uh, girlfriends I would say, <laughs> and they they are always you know uh, telling me that, that oh on one fine day we go to kidnap him and take him away and uh, you know he will help uh, help me in our my kitchen and my he's a very good cook and I said yeah please by all means kidnap him you know, <laughs> I give I give you the permission to take him and and uh, you know uh, steal him away from me so yeah he is very much in demand. Try it if you can approach yeah yeah okay so yes. a movie that you can watch again and again mm, life of pi yeah. ah. last but not the least what are the three rules you live your life by mm, honesty mm. um down to earth Absolutely, I can vouch for and, that. And um, <laughs> honesty, down to earth, and um, being happy. Gee, absolutely, and giving your own life—you're giving so much of your own life uh, for people and for causes. I think that is also something that you live by. That came through yeah, our discussions. G. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. But you asked me only for three, so I couldn't give you the fourth one. <laughs> yeah. Where do you see yourself uh, five years hence? Uh, five years from now, uh, I I will grow five years younger for sure. G. Uh, I, I I never I never never consider age is not the number for me. So for me. Uh, I'm not going to be going growing older. I'll be growing younger as the go, the years go by. Yeah. And uh, uh, I definitely see a a bright future, uh, not just for India but for the world, because uh, things are changing very rapidly. Things are changing positively. Uh, and uh, I'm remembered of one Sanskrit uh, saying which I'm very much uh, uh, attached to, Vasudheva Kutumbukam. Ah. The, which means the whole world is one family. Ji. And I think uh, this COVID, COVID has taught us that we need, we we have to be united and we have done a great job in coming together and helping out each other. Hmm. So uh, uh, we will be learning with, through a lot of experiences in the future, I'm sure. And the world, the world will definitely come together and the Vasudeva Kutumbukam will apply to all of us. Thank you so much for your time and for coming on Life Begins at 40. I'm really deeply gratified that you have given me a lot. I hope you are that fulcrum, uh, the fulcrum that brings the world together in a lot of ways. And you continue yes, to do that. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.